I'm uh, Rob, so I work for the company Biobest. Um, I'm honored to be the moderator of the last session about uh, monitoring scouting. Uh, it's a very short session, we only have two speakers. Um, so I was a bit struggling with my presentation. Should I make a general presentation about monitoring or should I make prepare a, a case? And actually I had a nice case, so eventually I ended up with a case. Um, so my case is the trap eye, and it's a device to automate uh, countings of, uh, of yellow sticky traps, insects on, on yellow sticky traps. Um, so why is Biobest interested in monitoring? Well, for the people who don't know Biobest, Biobest uh, sells beneficial insects, mites and uh, nematodes, but also pollinators, uh, bumblebees, biopesticides, and uh, monitoring traps and pheromones and, and things like that. So why is uh, monitoring so important for us? Um, Biobest offers free advice as a service. So if a, a grower buys a product from Biobest, we visit them every week or every two weeks with a very experienced and highly qualified advisor. And we give advice to the grower what to do. So this costs a lot of time and it's very time consuming. And yeah, these, this personnel is highly skilled and to train one advisor, it takes two or three years. Yeah. Um, but if a grower monitors their crop, it, they make life easy for us as well. Yeah. So we can give better advice, um, we can intervene much faster biologically, um, the grower has to use less pesticides and um, eventually we will sell more uh, beneficials. If they uh, monitor their crop, we can also uh, do remote advice, which is also uh, interesting from our part. For the grower, monitoring is very costly. It's a labor, uh, a lot of labor hours, and they need uh, skilled scouts. And that's often a hurdle for a grower. So if you look at the market at the moment, there are a lot of new opportunities, a lot of new startups with all kinds of, of different uh, autom automatic uh, monitoring tools. They often include AI. Um, just to give you a very short, uh, brief overview. Uh, one of these things is uh, an electronic nose, and that's actually a device that detects volatile organic compounds. So if a plant is attacked by a pest, it will produce volatiles, and you can detect the volatiles. It's uh, an old uh, technique, um, never had a real success, but maybe with the new AI possibilities, it could change in the future. Most other uh, monitoring tools include cameras. It could be mounted on a trolley, a fixed camera, uh, fully automated uh, or uh, uh, by a scout or manual with a picture taking by, by a scout. It could be a multispectral camera or RGB camera. So there's a wide variety. And on the picture here, you can see a trolley uh, fully covered with, uh, with uh, sensors uh, from equation. But I will want, want to focus here today on uh, automated uh, uh, countings on yellow sticky traps. Um, there are already some uh, uh, examples in, in the field eh, where you can take, take your mobile phone, take a picture of, of the yellow sticky trap, and it counts the white flies. Eh. Uh, there are other possibilities with a fixed camera in front of the sticky trap, or as you can see here on the picture, the scout box, where you can take the, the sticky trap, put it in a box, it takes a picture, and you put it back. So I want to focus here on, on the fixed camera. And what we did, um, we developed a, a next generation sticky trap uh, monitoring device uh, to save time and labor. Uh, the grower don't need uh, skilled scouts anymore. And we actually offer uh, scouting as a service. They buy the product and we do the rest. Uh, we, we count for them or the AI counts for, for the grower. The device looks like this. It's uh, a 3D print. We have a sticky trap holder. Uh, you see the, the yellow card. Uh, in front of the card, we have the camera. And on top of it, there is a solar panel. So it's completely wireless. Uh, there is no wires, and it's complete, uh, it, uh, it's, it has its own energy uh, production. In the back, there are two, two strong magnets. So you can just put it on a metal pole in the greenhouse, and that's it. Um, similar uh, devices. In the field, I from competitors often are a lot larger and, and more expensive. And you use one uh, device for a whole hectare. In our case, uh, we use 40 per hectare to get your spatial density and your spatial distribution of the pest uh, to cover the whole greenhouse. 
So what we do, we cover the whole greenhouse with 40 uh, traps per hectare, and they all communicate with each other. So normally in a greenhouse you don't have Wi-Fi, so it's difficult to, to get connection in a greenhouse. But they all communicate with each other, and you create a network mesh. Um, and they communicate with the central hub. And that hub um, transfers the, the data to the cloud. Um, we don't only detect one insect species, like whitefly, but we detect trips, uh, Macrolophus, Nisidiochorus, whiteflies, Tuta, and Ligromita. So as you can see, these are not only pests, uh, Macrolophus is a beneficial, so we choose uh, to also scout for beneficials. So if you want to give advice, uh, you need to know how much pests, pests there are and how many uh, beneficials there are to know what's, what's the equilibrium, do we have to uh, do something or not. So we trained an AI. Uh, for this, we labeled more than 200,000 individual insects, uh, which was not fun, but uh, we did it. Uh, but it's very satisfying to see afterwards such uh, pictures like this, where every square is an insect, and we are capable of detecting all those six different insect species on, on a sticky trap. We did a small test, uh, human versus machine, and we challenged our AI algorithm uh, to 10 of our, of our best scouts at BioBest, uh, and we gave them a, a, a set of, of uh, sticky traps. It took them more than 10 minutes to count them, and they had an accuracy of 71%. Um, and the AI had uh, accuracy of uh, 86%. And the time it took, yeah, it doesn't matter, because it's behind the screens. But imagine uh, a grower, a scout at the grower, he doesn't count for 10 minutes, he, he counts for an hour, two hours, or a whole day. So uh, you can imagine, concentration-wise, that the accuracy will, will even be uh, a lot less. So, the trap eye, you can see it uh, in, in the greenhouse. So what's the value proposition? Um, like we said yesterday, it's not all about the money. Um, that's an important part, eh? so the grower will save time and labor, um, but he will get scouting of, as a service. So we really take the, the responsibility out of his hands. Uh, he will get very standardized data. Uh, it's not person dependent anymore, uh, so it's always the same. Um, you get multiple insects in a go. Uh, so it's, as a person, it's, it's easy to count one insect, but if you have six different insects on a sticky trap, that's, that's quite hard to, 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 to count. Um, we will also get a higher density sampling points, so we get a, the spatial distribution in, in the greenhouse. It allows us to give better advice. Uh, we will also be able to, to give uh, remote advice, as I already said. And the grower also do, doesn't need skilled, scout any, skilled scouts anymore, so he can replace a scout or use his scout to do other things, uh, to scout for other pests that you can't uh, see on the, on the sticky trap. So it's a collaboration between BioBest and the company PAT. Uh, so BioBest, we include the department's business development, uh, we make the business plans, uh, coordination, the marketing, and then R&D, uh, that's myself, uh, collecting data for the AI, uh, testing the prototypes and functionality and things like that. And then we have sales and technical advisors that help us with our uh, value proposition. And then PAT is uh, the engineering partner, and for the people, maybe it sounds uh, rings a bell, it's the company that has these little drones that uh, kill the moths in, in the greenhouse. Uh, so they detect moths and then they fly after the moths. Uh, so they're good engineers and they develop the hardware, the network mesh, and uh, uh, they provide the dashboard for the visualization of uh, the data. And next to that, we have an IT partner to develop the AI algorithm. The direct gains yeah, for BioBest and also PATS, it's, it's easy, it's the sales of the hardware and the sales of the license. Uh, uh, because also taking a picture, sending it to the cloud and getting feedback, that also costs money. Um, uh, we also have the, the remote advice, less travel costs, more hectares per advisor that we can uh, accomplish. Uh, imagine that you have to can reduce uh, the number of visits with 25%, that's extra time of your visitors. Uh, of your advisors to visit uh, new clients. For the grower, a direct gain is save uh, labor costs. Indirect gains for BioBest, uh, if you can give better advice, you're more trustworthy, get better customer bonding. Uh, if, if they buy this product, yeah, they 
actually they signed a kind of a contract for three years uh, with BioBest uh, because it's uh, they have the trap eyes and, and they need uh, the service. Um, and uh, we expect more uh, sales of our beneficials. And for the grower, a better advice is a better biocontrol, less pesticide usage, uh, and they will get a standardized overview of pests and, and beneficials uh, on the dashboard. So why did we develop this product now? Uh, what were the turning points and what were the obstacles in the past? I think what's very important is that grow, uh, greenhouses are getting bigger and bigger. They're getting more than 10 hectares. Uh, so for an advisor, it's very difficult to get a good view of the whole greenhouse. So it's, it's nearly impossible to, get a, to see all the pests in the whole greenhouse. You can't spend hours and hours in one greenhouse. What's also important is that less pesticides are, are allowed, um, pesticide resistance, and supermarkets that demand for uh, low residue products. So there is more biological control required, and to do that, you need to do more monitoring. I think for all fields, not only agriculture, but the whole world, big data is becoming very important, and also in our field. And I, then I think about decision support systems. So once you have standardized data, automated data, you can think of automated advice as well. Uh, the AI possibilities are increasing exponentially. That's why we are now able uh, to count six uh, different species and we have the possibility to increase or to extend this, uh, these six species with many other species. New hardware innovations allow cheaper products. Um, we're also now capable of making that, that uh, dense network uh, and not using one, one device but 40 per hectare. Um, also important uh, from the last years because of virus restrictions, like in tomatoes, we're not always allowed to enter a greenhouse. It's very difficult to enter a greenhouse, so remote advice also offers us, us a possibility to, to give advice in such a way. Free advice is costly, so covering more acreages with the same amount of, as, 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 uh, amount of advisors. So Biobest is growing 15 to 20% per year, and we need to follow this uh, growth, uh, of course, with our advisors as well. What is the biggest risk? I think that uh, the rapid aging of technology is our biggest risk. Uh, there will be new camera systems, better AI applications, uh, and it will be an old device very quickly, I think. Uh, so it's not an endpoint. I think this is version one, um, and it needs further development. And I think in, in a few years, we'll probably have uh, TrapEye 2.0. Okay, thank you. Questions? It's always about the, the, the price. How much did it cost to, to one? <laughs> <laughs> it will be a competitive price. <laughs> um, well, it, yeah, I'm not going to mention the exact price because it's a, a co more complex business model. It's more up to the business development to answer that question. Um, but if you look at the grower, um, it depends a bit on, on, on how much time he normally spends on, on scouting um, and, and how much one working hour costs for the grower. But in general, it will more or less be the same as what he pays now for, his, uh, for Northern Europe. Uh, the pr price will be the same as, as his scout at the moment, or maybe even a bit uh, more expensive. But it's not only about the money, it's also about everything else that he gets. Hello, uh, Tasni Madamji uh, from INRAE. I wanted to know how you measure the lowering of uh, pesticide use, and because sometimes you can have like favorite effects uh, because of a better monitoring, you can have farmers who are a bit worried will apply more pesticide. How how we will measure if they really use less pesticides? You mean? Um, I think that will be feedback from our advisors because they also give the advice to give the chemical treatment. If, if there's no other option, they also give that advice. So I, we will get that, that feedback. Um, hello, Aura Parmentier, Université Côte d'Azur. Uh, so two little questions <laughs> again. Uh, the first one is about how will you anticipate the difficulties related to shortage in materials to 
build all those, those things. And the second is, uh, is it only for in-house installation? Okay, so our sales, it will start soon. Um, we will start slowly and build up so we can see that we can keep up the production. It's not this year 1,000 hectares, it will be 80 hectares and, and we will build up slowly to meet uh, capacity, of course. Uh, and your second question was, um, ah, yeah, it, it is at the moment only for indoor. Uh, it's watertight, but not for rain outside. That will need some extra development. Yeah, uh, Mark Bardin in, in Rai, yes. Thank you for this very nice talk. Uh, I know that you are a specialist of insects, but I wanted to know uh, what about monitoring of beneficial microbes? And are you aware of such uh, monitoring? Microbes? Mm, no. <laughs> More questions? All right. Well, we got actually a question in the chat, but it was exactly the same as the second one of Aura about the potential use uh, in outdoor systems. Ah, so, <laughs> Felix. Yeah, maybe just to add to it, it, it was developed as Obsess for the, the greenhouse uh, system. But uh, the, the opportunities for outdoor use are uh, much bigger, in my uh, opinion, still. Uh, and of course, if you're talking about different crops, uh, what, what you presented there is for the tomato uh, crop. But if you uh, talk about different crops, you will need to train the, the system for the, the, the insects that you expect there. And, Outdoors, you have a, a broader range of, of insects that you're facing than when you have a, a greenhouse crop. So that's going to be um, one of the, the challenges, but I think it's a challenge that can be overcome. And I, I see quite some opportunities for outdoor use uh, also. Thank one you. more qu last yeah, question. One last. All right. Uh, so this is going to be the unpleasant question. I'm sorry. Um, so, because we talk, we, we, we're talking about business models, and, and when we're introducing a new technology, we're also talking about, I mean, touching about the society models and how we want the world to be. And so, um, I mean, as a civil, civil servant, it's fairly easy for me. I know what I'm, who I'm working for in a company, obviously. I mean, you have shareholders, you have different interests. Um, and so, the question there regarding to this thing is, um, what do you think is the benefit to society to replacing something that was done by human beings in a context where we have an employment, for example, uh, and we replace uh, em like people by technology that re relies on resources that we know are diminishing and in limited amounts in the world? And so, obviously, I think it's pretty cool, and I like it, and I've seen it in the field, and I like, I loved it. But this is also, I mean, bringing to these questions that connect to the, the, the matter of the workshop. Yeah, that's true, but at the moment they are not monitoring. So they're, if they monitor, it's only whitefly, and, and that's it. So we, yeah, we, we offer more than, than what the humans count, and, and it's more correct. But yeah, I follow you, this is something that the human could do, but growers are not willing to pay for it. Yeah, and I think that's an important point, and one of the reasons why uh, I propose to have a, a session on monitoring, is that monitoring, if we're talking about integrated pest management, is a crucial element of integrated pest management. And if you look in, in many crops at the moment, there is no monitoring taking place. Meaning that all this talk about IPM is just empty talk. Because if you don't monitor, you don't know when to use pesticides. Uh, and so having these kind of technologies that will allow growers that currently don't have the time to monitor to get an autom automatic monitoring done. And so I hope that as a result, finally IPM will become IPM. Thank you. Okay, I think we can go In relation to with that ah. question, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, 
Is it not the case also with the use of chemical pesticides? Because people do not monitor with chemical pesticides, mm -hmm. because, but they could monitor and use less pesticides use less, yeah. without any kind of bio control. So it's a long story, this kind of monitoring that is not done and that people are not willing to pay, as our colleague was saying. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's a it question also the willingness to pay of uh, farmers uh, in relation to like real work. And uh, with regard to, to pesticide use, uh, at the moment, if you don't monitor, you have to use pesticides preventatively, the question. Uh, and I'm convinced that this huge challenge of reduced pesticide use by 50% by 2030 could be achieved simply by monitoring. And we would, uh, would be there already. So maybe we should focus a bit more on, on that as aspect. <laughs> Thank you very much for this very interesting and probably impacting discussion.